Hello, 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 welcome back to the channel, welcome back to this challenge stream where I will attempt to make a game in one session. So I've got a couple of hours to make this card game. In previous challenge stream I was making a dice game, dice rolling game, simple, simple little game. And today it's again a uh, very lightweight game, again uh, based on the tabletop card game called Llama, where you simply put uh, numbers on a discard pile. But we will get through the rules uh, later. So I have prepared this empty project, uh, I've copied, let's say, uh, the rules outlines, just the basic summary of the rules. And a few images of the cards, uh, those are all the cards that we will require. The rules are as follows. Uh, there's a deck of cards that consists of values 1 to 6, as we've seen there. Now the color actually does not matter at all. And the uh, seventh kind of the, of the card is a llama, which is worth 10 points but those are penalty points you actually don't want to have any points at all so who has the least penalty points is the winner in the deck uh, those seven cars are in eight copies each so that's well seven times eight 56 cards in a deck uh, the game is played in uh, multiple rounds or handouts. First round or each round, each player is dealt six cards randomly from the deck. And then uh, the players are taking turns. When it's your turn, you can either play a card. You can play the same value that's already on the discard pile on top or one higher so when there's number one you can either play a card number one or a card number two and so on and when there's card number six you can either play sixes or discard your llamas from hand and once there's a llama on the top of the discard pile You can either discard another llama when it's your turn or just go around and start with the number one again. So when you can't play uh, a suitable card from your hand, you can either draw a new one, which is risky because the aim is to get rid of all the cards in your hand because they are representing those uh, penalty points so if you don't want to draw a new card you can quit the round just fold your cards and you no longer take further actions in the in the current round so you'll just wait for the others to either uh, quit the current round also or uh, as soon as one of the players get rid of the last card from the hand the round is over as well so and when the round ends 
uh, the penalty points are distributed so whoever ended the round by emptying their hand they obviously get no penalty points because there are no cards left in their hand and on top of that they can remove some of their uh, penalty points and for those who got some cards left in their hand either by just not being uh, quick enough because someone else ended the round before them or they just quit uh, the ongoing round somewhere in the middle they count up their penalty points based on the cards left in the hand each value is that much penalty points so if you've got a number three in your hand you get three penalty points but if you've got multiple copies of the same value each is counted only once so if you've got like uh two fours left in your hand you get only four penalty points for the number four but if you've got like four and a six you've got 10 penalty points and llamas are worth 10 penalty penalty points so if you end up the round and there's a llama and a five in your hand you've got 15 penalty points in total as soon as someone accumulates 40 penalty points the game is over and the one with the least penalty points is the winner if no one has at least 40 penalty points a new round starts and the deck is shuffled and uh, everyone is dealt six new cards and we go again until someone reaches those 40 penalty points okay so those are the rules a fairly simple game but for implementing all the game logic it's uh, not gonna be that simple last time uh, with the dice game in challenge number one i've started immediately uh, trying to figure out all the classes and implementing those as as i went on this time i think it would be beneficial to start with uh, at least some basic rough analysis what we will gonna need and at least plan a few things ahead to avoid uh, like structural mistakes i would like to have a better architecture for the code uh, the last time it was kind of a mess everything in the, uh, in the in the game manager now i would like to be more organized also uh, i would like to make a very simple ai for the opponents because this game can't be played solo and yeah the opponents will be required so uh, some basic ai uh, will be required okay so let's get started let's plan what we need uh, just a quick brainstorm okay so it's a card game we obviously for the entities we are gonna need a card and we're gonna need a deck of cards that will handle all the shuffling and dealing new cards we will require uh, some kind of a player entity that will have a hand of cards also the penalty points counter 
the card has a value. The deck uh, will hold all the cards. Shuffling, dealing, dealing new cards. Uh, either for the game round start or drawing a card. As mentioned, I will require some uh, AI for the other players. And some UI to show scores. I... Number of cards in players. And players and the others too um, and then we will need some game logic mechanics so for the input uh, we will require a something like a button to draw from a deck, pull it from the deck, or just a uh, button to quit the round. And obviously some kind of controls for Selecting a card to play. And last time again, uh, thinking back, I didn't make any game states. I think this time around I would like to implement game states. So it's either a player's turn, it's going to be one, the other will be AI's turn, I think. there anything else we would need I might not uh, might not be that many game states for this after all okay okay so that's just the rough estimate what uh, what we need to do Uh, let's say all of these will require like mouse input clicking yeah i think that's the main topics we need to cover okay so with this uh, rough plan 
we can start. I mean, things will change as usual, but we'll see. So let's start by creating the cards and deck, making it shuffle, drawing it on the screen and test it out. So for the card. I think we should start with uh, the enum enumeration for the values. Those will be simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, and llama. Then for the car. It will have a value. And I mean, it could have the texture, right? And be private. Let's make a constructor. And obviously we need a position. So for the constructor, we need the value. We will need the texture. We need the position. I don't think I will bother with the position in a constructor. We'll see. Like, not right now. And we will have the methods to draw the card. Draw in a sense, putting it on the screen, not drawing it from the deck. So that will be the texture, the position, and the color. Okay, this will be all for the card for now. At least that's what I can think of. Let's move on to the deck. So, the deck. Uh, let's load the textures when creating the deck. I 
and save it in the dictionary. called just one through seven and zero is the back uh, back side of the card let's add it to the values We'll see if that causes any problems. Okay, those are the textures. And then we obviously need the cards in the deck. Will be the best list, maybe. Let's start with the list. And so we need to initialize all the cards inside the deck. And each of the values is in the deck eight times. So uh, we need the value and a texture. Okay. Value and texture. Let's do it in a four cycle. Eight times. Okay, so this should create the cards in a deck. And then we need a method to shuffle the deck.
you know, we could use an algorithm or just pick a random item from the list and put it in a new list. But uh, let me just grab this method that I've used previously in my projects. I hope that's not cheating much. We'll adjust that. So the list is cards. There's the new random Uh, let's see, count. And let's use tuples to switch the items. I hope it's gonna work, not sure. We'll see. This also called the cards, right? So uh, this should swap the cards in a deck, and we are going from the bottom of the deck to the top. Okay, it's good work. We'll see. Okay, and now to uh, draw a new card. So what we'll press do it turns the first element yeah can be but then we need to remove uh, that card from the deck. And do it like this. Okay. If anyone knows a nicer way of doing this, you can share it. Okay, so that's the deck. Uh, anything else we need with the deck? Shuffle, dealing cards, and linking cards. I think this is okay for now. So 
So let's create new Jack. And let's shuffle it immediately. And just to test things, let's draw a few. Let's go with six. Okay. When drawing a card, we should we should also check that there are cards left in the deck. I mean, there's no shuffling. Uh, while playing once the draw pile runs out you just can't draw new cards you can do something like if something like this Okay, now let's just draw draw the cards in the hand. We will need a position. So let's do it slightly differently. Get a card and set its position. Dimensions of a card are 128 height, 80 width. The dimensions of the window are 800 by 600 so let's do just four so we'll draw draw cards at this position and add it to the hand and then we can just draw them let's see okay cool oh well, that's the six cards uh, they seem shuffled we will restart it this to just verify so it's five six three four six five. Let's see if the... okay. So it's shuffling. There's the llama card. 
All right, so this would be like a starting hand and then the we take turns playing the draw. Okay. Okay. So those are the basic entities in place. So I think I should uh, make a representation of the deck on the screen and make it clickable to draw a card. Okay. So the deck will actually have a texture. But it's already loaded as the zero. So we'll just use this. But we at least need the position. Do it like this so far. And a method to draw the deck on a screen. This will be again. Easy, just this for the texture. We will use this. Position color, okay. And then to make it clickable, I need to implement, let's say, an area represented by a rectangle that we will cross check with mouse cursor, etc. Okay. I think I will create an interface and this will just require I think the rectangle that can be checked for the mouse cursor. I'm just gonna call it rectangle area to differentiate. Okay. We'll see. Okay, so then uh, stack will implement this interface. And uh,
I think I can just uh, set the rectangle once. I don't plan on moving, moving it around, at least for now. So, to set the rectangle... We will use the position. We don't have the position right. Okay, so the position will be a construction parameter. I'll set the rectangle based on the position. So this will be the top left corner and then we need the sizes and the sizes will be the sizes of the texture. The width, and the height, okay, so now we've got the area of the deck ready, then we need the A method that will check if we've uh, clicked on the deck. I think we should do the uh, update or let's call it check click and let's actually put this inside the interface. I can return ball if it was clicked or not. We'll see. Okay. And to implement this, we need the input from the mouse. And then we need the position. So let's do something like middle of the screen. So that's 400, 300, but that's just the top left corner, so that's not exactly. I think the width is 80, so 360. That's why it's 64. I just put it slightly higher. Okay, something like this. And draw the deck. And check. Okay. Let's head to the input manager. So there we will need the mouse state. Then we will Get the current mouse state and at the end we just place it in the 
previous. Okay. So let's have one of the properties saying if we clicked or not. Call it left clicked. And we'll just compare the states uh, the previous and the current one. So if left button is pressed and previously it wasn't then this means we've just clicked at this frame okay the other thing we need is the position That's just simply position and uh, that's point. Okay. But what's better for us? We'll see. Let's just make it a point for now. So there we know if we clicked and where. Hmm. Okay. So and then if we clicked and If what's it called rectangle area contains and we can check for point exactly what we need. So if we clicked at this area and we'll do something. And I think we will Construct an event that will say we've done something. Okay. So let's say in the interface we are gonna need an event click um, can I place events in the interface We need a type, right? So, do we need anything special? I don't think so. So, like this ok 
okay. Let's add this event. And when this and this is true, we'll just call the event. without any parameters we don't need to send any data and i don't think we need to confirm that let's do it just wait hello kosek uh, it's a card game called Llama. It's a simple card game. I mean, description here uh, sums up the rules pretty much okay that's cool i don't know much about pi game so we both know something Okay, thank you. Okay, so we've got this on click event ready. I think it should work. And we can add it to the thingy here. So let's create a method that will handle the drawing from the deck. I'm gonna call it deck click handler. That's intuitive enough. And we need to fulfill the Uh, and then handler parameters so that we can assign it. I'm going to do this uh, in the construction on the click. Let's do the, the click handler. And if when this fires, let's do well, something like this, but we need the So we are moving by hundreds and fifty. Let's do something like Hello Blue Knight, how it's going? Uh, it's going uh, well so far. We are in for like what? An hour, okay. It's been an hour already. Uh, we've done 
a short analysis, we've explained the rules of the game, and we've got a card and a deck, uh, I think, mostly ready. So we are on, on track, I would say we are on track. No major hiccups so far. Okay, so this will... Probably add a card to the hand. We'll see. Okay. Nothing's not correct. Entirely sure what. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, that's one of the reasons I've starting. I've started doing these uh, to practice the estimation. Actually, so. We'll see. I mean, I've got something like three hours left. Uh, hopefully, that will be enough. Okay, but now uh, we have a first problem. Game's not working. And uh, it can be what? What have we changed the deck? So we've got the position. Okay, uh, I can see the problem now. We are reading the texture that's not loaded yet. Let's just put that down there first. Okay. So that's the hand, that's the deck, and clicking in this area should add a car. Okay. As you can see, now we are uh, moving off the screen. That's something uh, we knew will happen. So actually, there's multiple solutions. Can either uh, move the cards around, uh, but uh, I think I would like to just show one copy of each and then maybe say how many copies you have so that the most cards 
space we will need is seven cards like one two three four five six seven which is exactly and that wasn't intended it's just pure luck is it it fits the screen perfectly so i think i'm gonna do it just like that and it's gonna take some just serious uh reworking now okay but so far it's working the draw mechanic is working the deck is working everything is fine so now we just need to move on to the next task which is the player entity and uh, the hand of cards for the player um okay let's do just that I was wondering if you have a video of an introduction to making 2D games for people who haven't made a game before. I mean, that's a broad topic. I mean, you can go through the videos available on the channel. That's all I have for now. If there's something that's suitable for you, or you can go uh, through one of the projects I mean it's all 2D okay so the player entity will have a hand of cards probably and okay now how are we going to handle this So I, what I want to do is just show each card type and probably just a number, how many copies you have in hand. or yeah i think that will be the best I basically need now is the car but with the additional information of how many copies uh, the player has in hand now I'm thinking what's the uh, best approach to achieve that whether I should make some kind of new struct or just do
what a maybe a dictionary and some counter next to it maybe we'll see let's try this way okay let's not we want it uh can you stop putting things that i don't want uh, okay thank you Ah, is that like this? Maybe. But now I need some additional information on how many of each uh, do I have so I need a second one in teacher not like this okay Okay. Okay. So I I think I'm gonna have to create nope. I think I'm just gonna create a new struct for the UI representation of the of the hand. Uh, yeah. Gonna call it, I don't know, and car. And it's gonna be clickable. position then in the constructor we'll set the texture and the position
And we will draw the card only if we've got at least one of those. So like this. Sure if this is required, it should be by default, but just to be obvious. Then uh, got the on click, and we just need the same logic here. Can I put this inside the interface? Or not? Yes, not. Okay. Might have been better to do it as a base class maybe then so that I don't have to like re uh, do this again and again I might change this I'm sure there are ways uh, using the interface So, got check click the event and the rectangle area that we need to somehow set first. of base and to set the rectangle area okay now we are setting there okay so this should be okay then we don't need these these and we just need to set the area as well okay i think it's gonna be the same as this or similar okay 
Okay. Okay. Now. Okay, now uh, going back to the player, so we don't need the count, I think we're gonna need the end card, okay. Right. Okay. I think we need the value as well. Okay, so now we can generate all those uh, in the hand. Okay, so we need the value first. Uh, it's going to be one. And we need the The hand car. So we need the value it's gonna be the same the texture. I might want to no, I'm just going to reload this, uh, doesn't matter now, any position, that is crucial, for now it's 5400, the correct one, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's the first representation, right, now we need just the others. Let's do three, six. And also there. And just the position that's plus one hundred, I think. Okay. So now to draw the the hand what do I draw hand then? Okay. 
undo this. Uh... Okay, there's no for each for the dictionary, obviously. Can we go through the values? Let's quickly Google. Okay, let's try doing it like this. Turning an array. So this should draw the hand, and it's drawing only if we got actually a copy of that card. So now to redo the drawing logic. So that should be the little player. Let's say draw card. Okay. And then we should just do like the hand card. Value count plus plus, right? That should be all we need. This means now uh, this instance of the card is then lost, but I think that's okay. Since we don't need to reshuffle the deck, to reshuffle the deck, we can just recreate it from scratch. That's okay. Okay, then let's go back there. Create an instance of the player. And then we don't need to set all these things. We will just draw these cards, right? Like so. Is this correct? Okay, and when 
clicking the deck we'll just do the same drawing a card let me draw from the deck and let's actually rename this to you know, add card Okay, good work, we'll see. Okay, something is not working since we should have drawn uh, six cards already. They are not being drawn. Okay, of course I'm not calling the draw, obviously. And we don't need the hand anymore. Okay. Okay, that's an error. Uh, deck player. not working uh, the draw hand I guess okay so the draw hand we can't do like this Why not? Position. So let's do if value. and the others should be there right okay let's see okay Okay, cool. The next obvious step is to actually show the counts for the cards. And for that, we will need a font. So let's add a font. Um, Right font. I'm not sure about the sizes. Well, let's do the thirty six bold uh, font name. Let's go with. Let's go with the Homa. We'll see how it will look. Okay. 
and then I would like to make maybe some helper class to draw text since I will be needing more of those. Team is still alive. Okay, so we need the font loaded. Inside the constructor. Loading the font, okay. And then just a method to draw text. And we're gonna need the position. Obviously the text. Let's put the text first. And a color. Well, now I should be able to draw a text from anywhere without any complications. Okay, hopefully. And I need to call this initialize method before I forget. Um, Let's put it first. Okay, now we need to draw the counter. Let's say if the count is higher than one, we'll draw the text. And the text is actually the count. And the position is like the same, but we need the Need to change it a bit. We like to put it on top, uh, like above the car itself. So the X is gonna be almost the same, but let's say plus 20. We will fiddle around with the values, we'll see. And the position for Y. Um, again, we'll we'll see. 
and we need the color. Uh, let's go with black for now. Okay. That should be only again all we need. Okay, so we need to put it a bit higher and right. But other than that, I think it's working. So put it a little higher and more to the right. Let's quickly check if that's too much or not. Okay, it seems precisely where we needed it. Okay, then I would add the same counter on the deck as well. And let's align it the same as the number four, and maybe a little higher. let's put it above number three and um, number four will be the discard pile okay so realigning the deck that should be somewhere around there or not it's in the construction okay so there will be a 350 slightly higher Let's draw the count. The count is inside the cards, I believe. Okay. The position. Okay, since it's two, two digits, we need to move it left a bit. Okay, can be. And also, let's put it above the number three, as we said. That's two fifty. Okay, then let's create the discard pile, and the discard pile should actually start with one card place on top of it, so that the first player can start playing. Okay, so should we put the discard inside the deck? Or just leave it there? Well, um, I think I need to put it inside the deck so I don't have to load the textures again and again and again. Let's say it's gonna be a card. All we need is just the last one.
Okay. Let's do a simple method just to make sure. Well, actually, we don't have the cards right. Just need the suit. Then let's not have it a card, let's just have it the value. And that might be all we need. And we will just draw the okay. Not sure we need that. So the discard position is gonna be the same as the position, but the X is gonna be slightly more to the right. Okay, something like this. And then we just need to draw the currently discarded value. So this is going to be the discard. Call it this card value. This position, right? Like so I hope this should be all. Okay. Okay, okay. And let's start by setting it. Like somewhere around there. Deck. Discard card. And we just draw the first one and get its value. Okay.
perfect. Okay, what's the card count? We've got like two, four, seven, eight. Okay, that's that's correct. Or is it? Uh, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ten is correct. Okay. Perfect. So, next task is to make the cards being played from the hand. And we've got almost everything we need to do there. Um, just need to assign the hand cards. With the with some kind of handler for the event, because now they are being clicked, but it does nothing, so we want it to be played. Okay. No. Okay, what do we need? Um, the end goal is it will call the deck discard card. That's the deck click handler. handler. So let's do We will need the value of the card being played. And this can be obtained from the sender itself, I hope, I think. And it should be, okay. Well, let's again try this. Um, and Instead of doing this, and we should also reduce the counter, right? We also need to change the logic quite a bit for the clicking. Or we can do that like in the handler. Okay. Now let's prepare uh, the card. It should be like the sender. Are right, hopefully. Well, not card, but card, and 
and if well then let's call it hand car and car count that's then one just do nothing otherwise we are going to discard the value and reduce the count Okay, and now we just need to chain the event to this method. But first, I, I'm thinking I'm gonna do a relaying event. Event. Okay. I can actually move the logic from the game manager inside the player itself. We'll see. Uh, and this should actually be for the on click. Let's do this again uh, to go through the events. So on click, and we'll do this. Okay. So just to link up the events with this handler and this will just call it or fire up this new event Okay, but we will need the the card, right? Okay. Or we really need just the the value. Uh 
But then also we need to check if that value is valid and it is playable. Okay, so I'm gonna pass on the whole whole hand card, yes. Uh, right, that's not the place. Is that right? Right. Okay, but first we need to check if we can actually play that card. That's this one. Okay, and then we just pass it on. Okay, so we need to on play card from the player. And we need this to be and card. Don't need these. Okay, perfect. And then we just need to link up the events again. Great. Let's rename this. Okay. So, and obviously, we are missing the game logic of uh, validating the card if it's playable or not. But that's the next step. Now we just need uh, want to be able to get rid of the cards. So that the drawing, okay. I guess we are not updating the the hand, right? Okay. So the where is it? The clickable. We need to call the check click the player's hand let's do this again Then we need to call this right, that, that should do the trick. Okay. Looking fine. OK, 
Okay, perfect. Progress. We restart this. And uh, the next step would be to implement the game logic that we can just play the card of the same value or one higher that's already on uh, on the discard. Okay. Uh, For the deck click handler, let's first check that there are any cards uh, left to be drawn. use this and do it only if we've got any cards left just a simple check Okay, okay, okay. Then uh, back to the game logic. So, uh, validating if the played card is one higher or not. So, this will be in the hand card click, right? There, the card value. Okay, so can we do something like As the thingy it's inside the player, uh, is there something useful? Let's explore. So, in um, get values. What does it do? Values of the constants in a specified enumeration. Okay. No idea. To know the type of this okay that's cool is there a way to retrieve the actual numbers like zero 
One, two, three. Let's ask Google again. Okay, it seems you can just cast it to an integer. Okay, so will something like this work? Value. Okay, looks like this will. So let's keep it dead. So that's the currently played uh, value of the card. Then let's check the discarded value. Let's call it current value. And it's gonna be card uh, deck this card value okay and then we just uh, do a couple of ifs I guess uh, let's just not overthink that too much so if plate value equals current value uh, let's do an order or plate value equals current value plus one or brackets plate value equals I guess one And llama is seven. And current value is seven. Then we do this. For some reason, my spacing changed to two. Much better. So if you are playing the same value, which is one of the options, or you're playing one higher, one higher, it's the other option, or you are cycling back and the current value was llama. You are playing 
number one, which is also allowed. Okay, so those are the only three valid options. Otherwise, it's gonna just whiff and do nothing. Okay. That'd be okay. So there's five, so I shouldn't be able to play number four. Okay, neither number one, neither llama. But I can either play five or a six, so let's try number five. Okay, perfect. And now number six. And a llama. And a llama. Okay, and now I should be able to play number one. Okay, excellent. Perfect. So the game logic is in place indeed. Okay, coming to the hard parts. <laughs> so we've got all of that. Uh, penalty points. We don't really handle those right now. So the uh, next part should be taking turns and letting the AI play. And kind of don't have to care about the penalty points for now. Because that's outside of the main game loop. Okay, from the input, we've got this, got this, got this, okay. So what's left to do? This, this. Number of cards in place and okay, that could be for the AI. Cannot quit a round so far. The game states, uh, I'm not sure we're gonna have to. Implement the game states. I mean, the flow is simple enough. We're just taking turns, so it should be just player takes a turn. Then the AI will take a turn, even though it will be kind of fast. So let's do just uh, one AI player for now. I mean, scaling it multiple shouldn't be that hard uh, in the future if you want to. Okay, so let's start working on the AI player. I think that deserves a new class. Okay, uh, the AI player needs um, now I'm thinking uh, all that card. Entity. Kind of never used, right? You can see that it's not drawn anywhere. I'm thinking we might not even need this at all. Because all we really need is uh, the value.
So let's do a quick refactoring of this. We'll just keep it as it is uh, in case. Okay. Hey, don't change uh, what's not broken, right? Okay. Let's not bother with this now. Uh, it's working as it is, even though it's an overkill for what it's doing. Okay, for the AI player, uh, it needs uh, the... It's only uh, its own hand of cards, which will essentially be just the values. apply this uh, what's it uh, gonna display just the number of cards in hand that's all that's important think so that should be all we need and a let's say position and some kind of texture okay we can hard code it uh, for now I don't think there's anything special okay So we need the texture just to represent the cards in a hand. Um, that will be the back side. Is it zero? And a position. I don't know, something like top left corner, maybe. Okay. We need to draw that players information mm, it's gonna be similar to this position go right right and just text so let's put it slightly lower mm, that's the end count and that's all right okay okay let's prepare a method to Put a new card to the AI player's hand. Something like add card. No. I think there's gonna be a card somewhere in there. 
and it's going to be just a hand at card value right okay simple enough Okay, let's start just by showing this uh, that it's working. And let's add uh, the initial six cards to the AI's hand. Okay, so let's add the card. Draw these and draw the AI player. Okay, something's probably not correct. Really? Okay. I mean, the only thing we've changed is the AI. There's nothing wrong with the AI. Nope. Okay. What have I? Haven't done that much changes, right? I think I've just edited the AI. There, draw. Okay. Why? Oh, I'm still using this. Okay. Okay, go back. Perfect. Great. Okay, so uh, let's go line by line. It's not working. Is okay. Oh, I see. Can't add the cards to the AI before it's created. Let's 
go. Okay, uh, this is the AI's hand. It has six cards in hand. I'm thinking uh, I'm gonna move it down a bit so it's aligned with this. Okay, so that's the dex position. So the deck is at one fifty AI is at one fifty, and let's actually do the same for the deck. This set the position there without the need of the constructor So it's like that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So uh, the AI player has its own hand now. We can see the count of the cards. And the last thing we need to do is uh, make it play. Um, So it's gonna oh, let's prepare a method first. And it's gonna return a news. Maybe. Oh my god. And the input's gonna be the current discard value so it's uh the logic's gonna be i guess really simple we'll just go through the cards in hand and play the first that mm, that's possible to play So, we will need the uh, some kind of this logic again. So, let's save the current value. Let's get the card value. It's actually already value. And 
let's compare those. So, So if the current value is the same or it's higher or it can recycle to one we need to remove that value from hand and let's do the trick with this okay So first we're gonna, or last, we're gonna return that value, but before that we need to remove it from remove. Did it remove like the first it's gonna find? Yeah, the first occurrence of a specific object from the list. Okay. Okay. So that's for the case, the AI. has a valid card to play. And if it doesn't, it's gonna return in now. Like, cannot. Couldn't find a suitable card in its hand. Okay. Then mm. now uh, we could use those uh, game states to differentiate uh, whose turn it is, but since we've got only one AI for now. I mean, we should be able to do with just a simple bull flag. Let's try it. Let's call it player's turn. Let's put it down there. Let's do it in the update. So, why does it keep switching to the this? So, if player's turn, let's check for the input. Else, the AI, uh, it's the AI's turn. And we should not forget to switch. Mm. 
Okay, check and click. this uh, this is when the player plays a card right so now we should switch to the AI's turn the same if we draw Okay, that's all the options we've got so far. Okay, so for the AI's turn, AI play card. We need the current discard value. I think it is. And this is gonna return either the value or not. Okay, then let's say yeah, I played this will either D be, be the value or null. So if AI blade is null, then the AI should draw a card. Um, add card. It needs just the value, so that should be this, no? Okay. Right. Discard card values. Oh, because that might be now, right? their way to tell them we know it's not I can do something like this, then okay, then. say if late uh, need to do it discount value right 
So, this means uh, if the AI played or not, and if it did, that's the value. So if it played, I'm gonna discard this value. It didn't, it's gonna draw a new card. And then we switch to the player's turn. Okay, so those are the very basics. Let's see if it works. Okay, so there's three. He's got six cards. Okay, let's go. Okay, we've played three, and he played one of the fours. Let's do it. Okay, he had five. Let's play a six. He had llama. Okay, so let's do one. He also had one. One, he had nothing to play, so he drew. And we've got just two. He had three, but we should have already one. That's uh, game logic that's still missing, but uh, looks like the AI is uh, working. And now he's out of cards as well. But we haven't implemented the winning logic yet. So, uh, what next? Um, winning around uh, could be the next step. I mean, for uh, time reasons, we might shorten the game to just one round <laughs> and not implement the other things like quitting around, counting penalty points. It's been like, what, three hours now? <laughs> But let's definitely make the winning condition. It should be easy. Okay, so once we Let's make a helper method to return the player current player's hand count total. Call it cards in hand. And let's again do this loop. Let's call it sum return sum 
and let's add up all the counts and return it as a sum okay so that's the total cards in player's hand Okay, now when we are there, and we are uh, playing a card, we should just check if it was the last one. So if player cards uh, in hand. Say less than one. Uh, something should happen. Let's uh, just again uh, make a simple bool. Just call it player one. And let's switch it there. Player one. And let's return. Let's not switch the player's turn. Or rather, let's do it. Okay, players, player one. Um, again, that would be a case to use the state machine. Dot, we are so deep in the rapid hole. So if player one. Let's just return for now and don't do any updates, but uh, we will draw something at least. Mm, and we will draw if player one. Let's use our. Font writer and draw. So the text is the congrats, you won. For example, <laughs> and the position really don't know. Somewhere around, I think 150 was the dex position. It's 250. The discard is 350. But there should be space above that, right? No, that's the number. So let's try. And then 50, not sure if there's enough space there. Maybe we're using black, right? And let's cheat a bit and win immediately just to check the position of the text. Okay, that's way too far. So a hundred to the left and more maybe. Let's put it right on top. 
Don't be shy. Let's try 50-50. Okay, a bit higher. Okay, that could work. Now let's do the same for the the AI. Let's be fair. So, if player won or AI won, and the AI will win when? Uh, well, when it's There, when it there plays a card, right? So, if AI, not sure if we got the counter and did end right. AI and count but then one let's say AI one I'm just being lazy now uh hacking the code a bit it's not the cleanest again, but hey. Sorry, you lost. Is that correct? Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay. So three, four, five, eight, six, llama, one. Okay, that was an easy win. Congrats, you won. We need some reset for the game. Now let's try letting the AI win. Not sure how to do that. I mean, I could keep drawing, right? I mean, seems like he doesn't have a three now. Okay, so <laughs> he wasn't able to win, even though I did nothing. Uh, I mean, the AI is not the strongest. Not sure. What will it what will it do when there's no cards left to be drawn? This is not handled anywhere, I think. Let's check. Uh, oh, I've actually put it in the wrong space, right? It should be if he played there, right? Okay, sorry. Uh, makes much more sense now. So the AI played this card. Okay, this is for Android. So actually, right, yeah. Count AI one, right? Dot. Okay. What to make the AI win? Okay. 
come on, play smart. <laughs> Is it possible that he's got no six? I mean, I've got almost all the fives and sixes, right? Okay. Let's give him less. Oh, no, we can't. Okay. Let's everyone just one card. And I'm good. Okay. Cool. Sorry, you lost. Okay. So this is working. Now we just need to reset the game to play again. So let's uh, make a reset method. Okay. Whatever we need to reset now. So definitely layer one walls AI one walls. We should also make it random who starts if it's us or the AI. Is there some kind of next bull? No. Okay. Then let's do it. What? So this is just. Let's do it like this. Close. One, maybe. So that's zero to one, right? So it's either zero or one, that's 50 50 chance. It should work. Then we need to recreate the deck. Draw new cards. And this is all set. Okay, so then use this in place of all the other things, but don't mess up the order. Okay, so we need the. Those are just pools. It's okay. Then we start by creating the new deck. Okay. Player. Is there something we need to reset? In the counters for the hand, right? Let's do reset for the player. So we need there count reset to zero. Anything else? Oh, that's actually all the player has. Just its hand. Okay. 
Uh, so it should be done before drawing. Take. Let's put it somewhere there. Supply a reset. You need this. We don't need this. And let's reset the AI as well. It just needs its hand emptied, right? Ah, uh, clear. Should be all. And uh, that should be all. Okay, and then the update. Let's just check if we've clicked. If manager like clicked, then we call the reset. That should be all. Okay, let's see. I mean, I think the game's gonna be the hard part. Okay, two, three. Oh no. Okay, cool. Well, we won, and the next click should reset the game. It seems like we are the start player. Six, twelve. 13 cards from the deck, that's 56. That's 8 times 8, right? I mean, 8 times 7. Okay, well... Something's wrong. Can't draw. Can't play. Something's not reset correctly. Um. Reshuffling. Missed the shuffle somewhere, right? Hello, with three. Thank you. 
Um, we are nearing the end. Almost complete. We can see the light. Uh, no, I think just the... Oh, we are creating the whole new deck. Okay. Deck. Shuffle. Let's go, okay. So this should be, should be okay. I mean, I don't necessarily have to like create new instance. I could just reset probably the cards and shuffle. Don't need to load the textures, the positions are the same. Okay, let's just quickly do a proper reset of the deck. But I don't think that's the problem. Player's turn. <laughs> should be okay Let's just play with less cards for now so we can test the reset uh, deck is never assigned to okay that's a good point Reset. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Deck. But then we are calling reset. She's gonna reset the deck again. I mean, it's not hurting us. Again, could not call the reset there uh, any constructor right. Okay. Why do I have just one card now? Well, I lowered it to one or two. Oh, just one. Okay. I thought I did. Well, and I guess he started and. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So reset now. I 
I drew, he drew. Yeah, we are both drawing. Five, six. Sorry, you lost. It seems like the resetting is working now. Wait, what just happened? Wasn't paying attention. Reset one, okay. Two, three. Okay. Okay. So I'm not seeing any bugs right now. That's a good sign. Okay, I think it's working now. Perfect. It's just the AI is terribly stupid. But, yeah. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> So we can either say that that's the complete game and be done with it, even though we are actually missing the half of the game. Uh, we're just playing one round. It should now, after the Round is finished, it should count up the penalty points and decide whether someone has 40 or more and lose uh, or a new hand is dealt and we continue playing. I mean, now we have the reset uh, in place, so it shouldn't be too hard. But then it's not it's not even that easy on the other way. Yeah. So just counting up the points and also the game choice of quitting around early. I mean uh, didn't make sense when playing just one round but if we were to play the whole game it would be needed yeah uh, I think this could be enough for this stream and this game. I tried to take a few lessons from the first one and do a few things differently, uh, doing a short analysis at the beginning, 
to plan out what needs to be done. That helped a little, I guess, and splitting it to more classes. We are still not using the game states that would help a little in that case. Wouldn't have to manage it with so many ifs and bull flags. Yeah, the code would definitely be cleaner. But we can keep that for the third time around. Okay. So, to sum up, I think uh, we've managed to make or to make the job uh, the game is playable. The AI is not the smartest, <laughs> but that was to be expected. I mean, it's run just being run with just one method that's uh, basically picking the first card that's playable. But it was fun. If again learned a few things uh, or at least practiced, and that that's the whole reason why I'm trying to do this to exercise, to practice, uh, to make my estimation more precise in sense how long would things uh, take to create. Okay, where are we assigning the cards? Uh, there, reset six cards. Uh, yeah, so I had fun. Hopefully you've had a little bit of fun as well. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a suggestion for a next game we could make. And have a nice rest of the day. Take care. See you soon. Don't forget to, if you want to try the game yourself, the link will be in the description. I will commit and push the whole project to the usual repository so you can download it there and try the game for yourself. Make your changes, improve the AI. Uh, send me a message if you are successful in that. Okay, so that will be all. Uh, thank you for being here with me. Again, have a nice rest of the day and I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.